Welcome to part three of my series focused on the two-player co-op games for the NES. So far, we've covered every beat-em-up, including classics like Ninja Turtles 2 and 3 and River City Ransom, as well as every running gun on the system, including jammers such as Jackal, Contra, and Gorilla War. In this video, I'm joined by my buddy Chris, who drove down from Asheville to help me play through every sports co-op title released on the NES. Chris is a musician, artist, teacher, and general leisure enthusiast, so he was more than up to the task. Also, he's just about my favorite person to hang with ever, so it was great to have him as my wingman, especially because, whew, most of these games, woof. We have collected here every NES game that's sports related where you and a second player can play on the same team. Same being the most important word here. Pretty much every sports game has a 1v1 mode where you can compete against each other, but I could only think of 13 titles that allow you to play cooperatively. We've ranked them in order from worst to first based solely on the criteria of which ones we enjoyed the most. So yeah, let's hop right into it. Number 13, Wayne Gretzky's Hockey. Oh boy. To start with, there's a bunch of options to choose from and pressing A switches between them, but select chooses. If that sounds backwards, it's because, yeah, it absolutely is. So you and your partner choose your team, awkwardly enter your names, and Jesus, what a mess. We thought maybe we selected the wrong option, but yeah, we are both on the same team here. But unlike every other game on this list, there's no number one and number two floating around the players, or even some color difference to help you distinguish between who's controlling who. Instead, you both just blink repetitively like you're trying to warn planes not to fly too low to a cell phone tower. For some reason, we could never complete a pass, just constantly being hit with offsides penalties, even when we were right next to each other. Oh. We did a successful pass. How? How? Maybe we don't understand the rules of hockey or something, but I've never seen this level of strict enforcement in any other hockey game. Seriously, every pass we tried. You can't control the other players on the team, which is, yeah, not good. But honestly, you can barely control your own characters, so what's the point? After one period with no shots on goal and 10 times more penalties than successful passes, yeah, that's enough. Awesome. All right, we're done, fuck this game. Number 12, Ultimate Basketball. So to start with, this game actually looks pretty good. The graphics are a little better than Double Dribble, just with extra swole basketball players. Like many of the other basketball games on this list, there are also these amazing looking cutscenes when a dunk is attempted. Wow. Hilariously, dunking is surprisingly less successful than you think it'd be. Half the time, the player just jumps up in the air and lands back on his feet without shooting. <laughs> also, this music is pretty jamming. So what's wrong with this game? Well, goddamn, this might be the hardest NES game out there. I mean, holy shit, the AI is turned up to 11 here. Every time you inbound the pass, the other team steals the ball and immediately scores. Every time. Eventually, we figured out that the reason we kept giving away the ball was that unlike other games, you don't pass to whoever you're pointing at, you actually pass to whoever has an arrow over their head, which you choose with the D-pad. This system makes sense in a game like football where you have time between plays to switch around, but in a fast-paced game like basketball, as soon as you try to choose who to pass to, the computer has already stolen it from you. 22 to zip. Jesus. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to pass the ball. Before the second period ended, we were down 36 to zero without ever possessing the ball in the other half of the court. And yeah, that was enough punishment. All right. <laughs> Number 11, NES Play Action Football. So a couple positives. It looks awkward, but the angled view of the field kind of makes sense in that it gives you a wider view of the action than even something like the far superior Tecmo Super Bowl. Like that game, NES Play Action Football also lets you choose from eight different plays on offense and defense, which is pretty great, honestly. There's also individual stats for each player, which is neat in theory. What else? The music is okay. Like Wayne Gretzky's hockey, there's no number one or number two on the screen to indicate which player you are, and unlike Tecmo Bowl, you cannot switch which player you are. On defense, it's just two random defensive ends, and on offense, one of you is the quarterback, and the other is whoever the ball is given to or one of the guys being thrown to. You will at every moment be completely confused about who's who and who's not who. Oh! That was you, right? What? <laughs> We're <in> offense? <laughs> no! 
Controlling the characters is equally baffling, and we constantly found ourselves getting stuck or endlessly chasing the opposing team but never catching up. Worse is throwing the ball, as without any indication of which receiver is controlled by whom, we'd inevitably be running away from the ball without realizing. In single player, this isn't a great game, but in two player co-op, it's not just that it's bad, it's that it's completely unnecessary. Wow, that is the biggest football I've ever seen. <laughs> that missed? How could you tell? <laughs> Props to the developers for trying to be inclusive with the programming, but of all the sports that lend themselves to the co-op experience, American football is probably the least successful. God knows I'm trying my best here. I mean, dude, I don't know what's going on in this game. Number 10, All Pro Basketball. Hmm, this game looks familiar. Almost exactly like a game I played a ton as a kid, Hoops, which is another co-op game we'll get to shortly. Turns out, yeah, it's basically the same game engine, including sprites, sound effects, and these rad cutscenes. Whoa. Whoa, did you see his thighs? Oh. If you've ever played Hoops, this is basically a pumped up remake with improved graphics, okay. more sprites, and some pretty catchy music. Shoot, Chris, you got it, I believe in you, yeah! yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's the little things, you know? Unlike Hoops, this is a full 5v5 match with you and your partner each controlling a player that rotates between you depending on who gets passed to. Sounds great, right? Well, all pro basketball has one massive flaw. In Hoops, you play half court, so if you rebound the ball, you have to run the ball back to the line before heading to the basket. All pro is full court, but it only shows one half of the court at a time. When you head to the bottom of the screen, the playing field reverses, and now instead of running down, you're running up. So essentially it's still half court basketball, but with this bizarre mechanic to try and fool you into thinking it's a full game. It is one of the most confusing feelings ever to be running one direction, whether on offense or defense, only for the screen to suddenly reverse and then you're running the wrong way. Also, I hate always taking the ball out. I wanna get thrown the ball at some... <laughs> Who the fuck did I just throw that to? How is it possible with 10 people on the fucking court that none of them got that ball? Maybe if you play this enough, you can get used to it, but with a far superior version of this still on the horizon, we suffered through a few periods and called it quits. Number nine, Goal 2. Goal 2 is the sequel to Goal, which also made the list. You can select one of the many countries like Poland or Romania, and even choose your tactical formation, which I'm gonna go ahead and say probably won't matter that much. What, there's formations in yeah. soccer? Yeah. It looked like they're just chasing the ball around. There's a lot of weird changes here from the first game, like the A and B are switched, so pass is now shoot and vice versa. Also, there's this annoying bird's eye view that pops up whenever the ball is played into the air. You can pick whether you control the goalie or not, which is a damned if you do kind of setup. When the CPU is in goal, man, it's like he's jumping out of the way of the other team's shots. When you're in goal... <laughs> it didn't go in! No, it went in! <laughs> Like Ultimate Basketball, the CPU is way, way too hard, and you're basically given a few seconds before the opposite team steals the ball and jogs unmolested down the field. The ball doesn't stick to your feet, it kind of bounces in front of you like in real soccer, but man, it is hard to control. The passing is equally confusing, and you'll be booting it unintentionally to no one. <gasps> I stole it! Hit me! <laughs> The biggest issue is that it always seems like the two main players are visible, but the other eight field players are perpetually off the screen. Every time the other team has the ball, you just marvel at how much space they have with no defenders in sight. It should really tell you how bad the first four games we discussed are, that goal two is coming in at ninth place, because it is an unfair, unfun mess. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're, we're stopping here, that's enough of this game. Number eight. Round ball 2v2. I don't know why, but I always thought this was a tennis game, but it's yet another basketball game. Yay. Well, there it is in all its 8-bit glory. It's pretty simple compared to the sprites and cutscenes of All Pro or Ultimate Basketball, but hey, at least there's sound bites. Round ball, two on two challenge. Two on two challenge. And man, this soundtrack is a real jammer. The best part though is that there's a huge roster of random dudes to select from. Look at this guy. Yeah. Now look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Five heads aside, it doesn't matter who you pick, all the players look the same, and they're always in either blue or gold jerseys. 
Obviously, at a quick glance, this is nothing special. It is half-court rules, so you have to walk the ball back before taking a shot, but otherwise, hey, at least it controls fairly well. The CPU isn't massively overpowered, and there's no odd design gimmicks. It's a little awkward both in appearance and mechanics, and for some reason it's surprisingly easy to miss shots. The controls are a little awkward at first, but once you get used to them, round ball is actually pretty fun, even slipping in some unexpected dunk animations here and there. He pretty went cool. under the legs! He did, I saw what that. What the fuck? Also, round ball is the first of several sports titles that support not only two-player co-op, but up to four players using the satellite or NES4 score. You'd be playing 2v2 instead of four on one team, but still, that's pretty cool. Other than that, yeah, it's not great, but it was at least playable, which is sadly saying a lot. Hit me! <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, Harlem Globetrotters. Here's another four-player compatible title, Harlem Globetrotters. There's kind of an odd amount of options and choices considering, yeah, you can only play as the Globetrotters. Dude, look at this guy's snake Man. eyes. <laughs> The graphics are pretty lousy, and once again, you can't tell which player is which, but overall it actually plays well, which is to say, it's actually playable. What a revelation! Also, the computer is way too good, which is pretty funny considering it's the Generals, the team that never beats the Globetrotters. I guess the Generals really were due. He's spinning a ball on his finger! Just take it! The main attraction of this game is the proto-NBA jam effects that were peppered in here. We never did figure out how to make these trick shots happen consistently, but when we did pull off the super moves, it was pretty exhilarating. Somehow. Oh, did you see that? What was that? <laughs> that coupled with the fact that this game is way more of an accessible basketball game than the three others we discussed, makes Holland Glowtrotters a surprisingly okay playthrough. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> Number six. Goal. Hey look, it's goal. One. Now James claims if we win this, he's gonna get a Jalico <laughs> tattoo. <laughs> uh, I'd say the odds are pretty good that we will not be winning this. So pretty much the same format as goal two in terms of options and whatnot, and OG goal shares the same angle of view, but at a much wider scope, which makes seeing the other players way easier than the sequel. Everything that's wrong with 2 is done much better here, including more responsive controls, an easier computer AI, and somehow even better graphics. Also, you can switch to other players on the field fairly easily, which sounds pretty obvious to say if you've ever played a FIFA game, but clearly in the 8-bit days, this function eluded a lot of programmers. The only downside is that the CPU controlled goalie option is gone here, which means all of a sudden one of us is playing keeper, and yeah, that usually leads to an easy goal for the competition. Also, even though the enemy team is tamer in this edition, they're still pretty ruthless. Yeah, corner. <clears throat> Damn! What? Yeah, run it out. Wow, you deserve that one, buddy. Overall, goal is a little clunky, especially when it comes to passing, and even though you'll probably spend a lot of your time chasing after the ball in slow motion, this is kind of fun in a small way. Oh, <laughs> Chris. Oh, off the post! Holy shit, dude, how did you miss? Number five, Kings of the Beach. Hey, a new sport. All right. Kings of the Beach is a volleyball game that was made by Konami for their Ultra label. The setup is pretty straightforward. You and your partner take turns serving or returning and then go into a typical bump, volley, and spike where you sort of nudge the ball back and forth to each other. The control here is a little awkward in that you need to press multiple buttons in the three pass sequence in order to properly spike. That and the timing just takes a little getting used to. Okay, so A and then A, B. So A, it's gonna launch it. Then A to jump again, then B to actually hit it. Oh. <laughs> okay. It took us a lot of trial and error to get it going, but we did occasionally experience moments of triumph. Okay. Oh! Yes! Oh, that was a yeah. kill shot! The graphics are nothing wild, kind of bland considering it's Konami, and not much is happening on screen, but they did slip in some awesome little animations. Uh, Perfect. Brrrup. What are you gonna do about that? Yes. Double high five, that's what you're gonna do. The music though is really, really good. All in all, Kings of the Beach is very playable, a bit tedious, but as you get used to it, the gameplay does become very satisfying. Maybe though, there's another volleyball game out there that can top it. 
Dude, you are oh. super spiked. Oh, wait, that's the wrong game. You are king <laughs> of the beach in this motherfucker. <sighs> Number four, Nintendo World Cup. Nintendo World Cup is one of the techno sports games, including Super Dodgeball, Crash and the Boys Street Challenge, and another game that it may or may not have come packaged with. It's pretty basic soccer stuff, pass, shoot, tackle. Immediately once you start playing, that Technos charm seeps in. Everything from the upbeat music, to the simple responsive controls, to the goofy characters whose eyes while out when they get hit. But Look at this Ross Perot looking motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like in Super Dodgeball, after enough abuse, players will give up and lie on the ground the rest of the match. Boo, he's faking. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty fun, maybe a tad monotonous in the constant running back and forth, but charming and exciting nonetheless. Oh, heck out of here. The only downside, you can't switch characters in co-op mode, meaning that yeah, whoever you choose on the first screen, you're stuck with. The first player can direct the computer players to pass or kick, but yeah, that kind of makes for a lopsided co-op experience. However, there is this rad dialogue box on the bottom left that shows your command and whether the player can accomplish it or not, which is a really neat touch. Did that go in? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Number three, top players tennis. Hey look, a tennis game. I've yet to play a decent tennis game on the NES until top players tennis. Who knew? You have your choice of former professional players, Chris Evert, Ivan Lindell, or... Girl, boy. <laughs> The only difference between the boy and the girl is he has bushier eyebrows. <laughs> Chris and Ivan come with their own stats, but the boy and girl option let you customize your player's stats, which is, hey, it's a nice touch. Otherwise, it's pretty typical tennis action. A hits the ball hard, B kind of softly lobs it. Like all of these games, the controls aren't super intuitive, and timing your returns, and especially your serves, takes a bit of trial and error. The animations are pretty simple, but way sophisticated considering the reaction speed of the sprites. <laughs> they even snuck in some extra animations for close calls. Also, just listen to those talking sound bites. That's something you don't hear in every 8-bit game. 30, 15. The AI is pretty hard, but the responsive controls and the quick gameplay actually make this a surprisingly addictive sports title. Number two, hoops. Look familiar? Yeah, it's the better version of all pro basketball. Hoops is a street style basketball game where you play basketball. Man, I wish at least one of these games went for a silly base war style approach. You pass, you shoot, you block, you steal, you take it to the hole. The controls are solid, the graphics are really good for what it is, and best of all, this game has personality. <laughs> I forgot the, the arrow. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty crucial part of that game. You can select from several different styles of player, from all around solid, to tall but foul prone, to short but excellent shooter. There's even a fat kid named Jammer who is surprisingly effective. Nice. Oh! Vroom yeah! chaka! It kind of just depends on your playing style, but best of all, it gives the game a lot more replayability as you can kind of tinker around with different player combinations. And the no! little dude blocked you. What? <clears throat> little Hitler over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe not as deep as the single player simulators like Tecmo Super Bowl or Baseball Stars, but for what it is, Hoops has a lot to offer. The AI is as up to task as all the other Terminator-like opponents we face in the other games, but thankfully, I own this game as a kid. Perfect. Look at that teamwork Excellent. right there. Execution. Co-op. <laughs> That's when I'm gonna start yelling in, <laughs> in basketball games, is like, when they do an alley-oop, they're gonna be like, co-op! Number one, Super Spike V-Ball. Finally, the last and arguably really best two-player co-op oh. sports title on the NES is Super Spike V-Ball. As I mentioned earlier, it was released as a standalone title and then later packaged with Nintendo World Cup as a combo cart, which is, damn, that's a good combo. You can pick from four different teams, each of which has a particular strength like spiking, speed, or defense, brought to you by none other than Bimmy and Jimmy from Double Dragon. Also, man, the requisite 8-bit babe got a big upgrade for Nintendo World Cup. Compared to the other games on the list, it's easy to see why we'd rank Super Spike V-Ball so high. 
The colors are great, the sprites are huge and detailed, man, even the crowd is well animated. Like Kings of the Beach, the timing of serving and spiking takes a little getting used to, usually about two to three warm-up games. Now what do I do? <laughs> I don't know about serving, we haven't served yet. Still haven't. <laughs> Pretty much it. <laughs> still, it should tell you a lot that even when we were getting obliterated, we were still having a great time. Unlike Kings of the Beach, Super Spike is a lot more forgiving in its hit detection, meaning you don't have to be perfectly in line with the ball, or even that close, to make contact. This in turn allows for much longer rallies, and as these build up over time, man, they get intense. This is one of the few games I've played with friends that creates a ton of involuntary yelling whenever there's a close save, vicious spike, or unexpected block. Yeah! Oh, the blockade! Super Spike V-Ball is not just the best sports co-op title, but one of the best two-player games for the system, period. All in all, yeah, these were a pretty mixed bag. Most co-op games are pretty fun even when they're bad, but some of these sports titles were way beyond the acceptable limit of bad fun. Some of that is the difficulty of the controls or the computer teams, but some of it is just the developers not understanding how to cater the sport to a two-player experience. There's a reason there's no baseball games on this list, because yeah, that sport doesn't work well for co-op, and the same can definitely be said for American football, despite NES Play Action's god-awful attempt. The best titles were the ones where you and your partner were both visible at all times, which sounds like a total no-brainer, but unbelievably, that simple requirement only happens in a handful of these. We'd wholeheartedly recommend the top five as fun pick-up-and-play two-player titles, but the other eight are hot garbage. Try them at your own risk. Big, big thanks to my best buddy Chris for fitting in what turned out to be an all-day session playing these games and recording this footage. This is probably my favorite series to do, but man, it takes a lot of time to set up and way, way more time to edit, so I apologize for the long gaps between episodes. There's still several more genres left to cover, so as I lure more of my friends over to help me plow through some, I'll be back with more two-player co-op action. Until next time, thanks for watching, guys. Bye! Bye. hey yo. On top of my YouTube channel, I'm also making exclusive videos over at patreon.com slash words, like this week where I count down my 10 favorite games for the Sega Genesis. So if you'd like to see more of my content and also lend some support, there's a link in the description.